So welcome everyone to the Co-Creators Convergence Thursday call. I'm Noelle Marshall, and uh, I think Bob's around here somewhere. There he is. And together we call ourselves Light Partners, and uh, we're the stewards of the Co-Creators Convergence. So welcome everyone, everyone that does and doesn't have your camera turned on. This is a wonderful turnout. Um, I think we're going to begin tonight. We have such a wonderful week. Uh, the World Unity Week was the 19th through the 26th. And the Co-Creators Convergence was uh, one of the contributors. There were about 31 different rooms that were hosted by different people on all different kinds of topics. And of course, the Co-Creators Convergence, we, we have a group that has so many different talents. As we're, as we, you know, organized uh, through Barbara Marks Hubbard. And she asked us, what is your gift to the shift in humanity? So our group, Everyone brings a different gift, and it's wonderful if they share. So um, we decided that our group will be our the name for our room will be Gifts of the Magi, and it's not only that the presenters are magi, but we all have an inner magi, and so the whole purpose was to bring the magi, inspire everyone's magi, and we did that through concerts, films. The films were tremendous. And with every filmmaker there and the after talks were um, outstanding. Uh, and we had uh, panels on near-death experiences, spirituality, oneness, education, uh, children's uh, educational teaching piece, just so many different topics. But uh, one thing that happened during this week was um, World Unity Week hosted Jean Houston and Jean Houston, Dr. Jean Houston, a renowned spiritual teacher, uh, gave a, I, I considered her opus. She gave the keynote uh, speech on the closing ceremony, and it just shook me to my core. And so I figured tonight, yes, we want to celebrate all the wonderful things that went on during World Unity Week, but I thought we would start tonight by listening to. 27 minutes of just absolute trenching wisdom spoken so beautifully. And I, you know, there's just not enough positive things you can say about uh, Dr. Jean Houston. Uh, she is just a prolific writer, teacher, ongoing, has classes going. I think one started the day after World Unity Week. So she is an amazing treasure and, uh, and comes from a quite a beautiful lineage from uh, Tehar Deshardin, was uh, one of her mentors. And, um, and Barbara Marks Hubbard was one of her dear friends. And so she started the human potential movement. And I think that her legacy is, uh, well, it could just continues to grow because she continues to do what she does best, and that's being a, a, a super organism for humanity and evolution of us all. So without further ado, I'm going to ask everyone to just sit back, relax, turn off your cameras, turn off your video, and I will start this screen share with uh, Dr. Jean Houston. Okay, we made it to our keynote speaker, and this is something that's so, so, so special. Jean Houston uh, is with us, has been with us uh, throughout this whole opening and closing. And Jean, it's delightful to have you with us. You're a hero of uh, my big sister, Jenny, who's here in the room. She's so excited, uh, and we all are so excited. We share that excitement. Thank you. You are a pioneer and a visionary. You know, we've been honoring Taya de Chardin through the week, and of course, uh, famously, your relationship with him as a young child, your friendship with him, your whole life devoted to this work, and you have laid the foundation for the rest of us, you and the, the other pioneers uh, of this new earth that is where the ground upon which we stand. So thank you, Jean Houston, for being with us. You're so, so welcome. Oh, thank you so much. You know, you bring up Teilhard de Chardin, who I knew when I was 14. And one of the things he said to me, he had a thick Fred Fred tracks, and he said, Jean, 
The people of your time will be taking the tiller of the world, but they cannot go directly. They must touch upon every culture, every people, and bring it together. And I was, as I was watching these incredible events by you, you band of angels, that's what you are, <laughs> you know, where you have crossed the great divide of otherness and you have brought so many ideas and people and new motivations. You give a new word to motivations. It's, it's a great celebration. It's a great unfolding. And above all, it is a great loving. And I feel so honored to be here with you. I'm reminded of the words, the wonderful words also of um, Gandhi. <laughs> and when he said that as human beings, our greatness lies not so much in being able to remake the world as being able to remake ourselves. Whoa. And what I see in this last several hours is so many of you who have consciously and conscientiously remade yourselves, and so the world follows. You know, let me tell you what I also see. I believe that every one of you is a cosmic agent placed in a, um, a biodegradable space-time suit. <laughs> you know, that is pattern, your pattern to operate at different levels of, of wonder, of excellence, to make a difference in this particular space-time of Earth's history. I mean, certainly, friends, given the nature of the, the problems and the challenges that face us, we have to think about what are these other possibilities within us. Some of you know I've spent a lifetime in, uh, studying human capacities. But also, I can't give up because historically, historically in evolution, as well as in culture, dangers seem to push us to a higher level, what we sometimes call emergence through emergency. I mean, the set of global problems that humanity is facing presently may turn out to be as important to our continued evolution as the oxygen crisis was to emerging life. Never in the history of the human race have the dangers seemed so extreme, yet in their role as evolutionary catalysts, they may, they, they may just what is needed to put us up to a higher level one that requires new templates, optimal templates in your mind, your body, your soul, which if practiced, allow for all manner of new growth and opportunity. Plato talked about the idos, the idos, the divine ideas, that everything has a divine idea. And oh, dear friends, what I am seeing in all you is people who have heartened to the divine idea in themselves and are bringing it forth in extraordinary ways. Surely we have arrived on this earth at the great time of, yes, deconstruction and recreation, a time which I've come to call second genesis. Your stories, your capacities are shifting as your story as people of, a, of the world unity is becoming part of what I think is truly the story of stories, which is the present time. The present time is truly the great, unique singularity of history. So yes, we ask, how can we go beyond the, the masochism of decades of toxic thoughts, waking up from the bad dream, which we can no longer support any more than we can support peak oil? <laughs> I have a statement that I say to myself every day, just to keep myself on the right track, I, I say, I re agree, I agree to, rel to relinquish those limiting patterns of body, mind, spirit. I agree to the old relinquish the old emotions, the old volitions, the old understanding. I agree to discovering ways of transcending and transforming the local self so that extraordinary life can arise. My passion, I agree to explore my passion to engender the passion for the possible in my human development. 
while discovering what that possible is. I agree to reach out toward my higher destiny while knowing that it is reaching out to me. And that is as one who helps world unity to emerge. How do you do this? You know, a major thought is that the universe dwells in each of us and that the past, the present, and future are simultaneous. That's part of the new physics, simultaneous. You are not a, an encapsulated bag of skin dragging around a dreary little ego, not at all. You are the entire universe expressing itself in miniature. And that is why you have the capacity of seeing reality, as we've seen so beautifully, seeing reality and working in reality from so many more perspectives, even that of future humans. One day my dog was pawing at a rug, just pawing and pawing at a rug in my bedroom. What is it? What is it? He just looked at me and kept pawing. So I went to look at the rug. I lifted it up and there was a paper a scientific paper by a remarkable lady by the name of Anne-Louise Smitsman. And it was about how the future actually exists. And she's also a quantum physicist. And I said, whoa, that's, that's right up my alley. That's what I'm so, we have the future human in us. So I immediately got in touch with her. And since that time, March of two years, a year and a half ago, Every day on Facebook, we write together and we wrote a trilogy on the future human. It's going to come out in January. Actually, it was a huge book, about 900 pages, and it ended up not being a book, but being a doorstop. So we've turned it into a trilogy. But one of the things that we know is that the future human exists in us. And when you know this, when you really know it, not just understand it, but feel it, it gets in your bones, it flows like briny sea in your blood. It is the biggest paradigm shift of all. It changes everything inside of you. It even reignites your pilot light. Oh, friends, the point is also that you physically have to do something to move out of the old, no longer working condition you announce to the universe in very specific and active ways that you are ready to change your belief structures because after all, belief structures reality. So, okay, you conscious, self-aware super organisms, each one of you, as you enter the higher cosmic agenda, the divine matrix, and you tap into the matrix, you then enter mysteries that transform your body, your mind, as they reveal the relationship of yourself to the whole. They empower you, and you begin to express yourself in richly creative new ways. In other words, you begin to become a revelation to others, an intellectual and psychological beacon, an evocateur of new patterns, new relationships, new discoveries. You bring new mind and new matter to the old world that's passing away, and you serve as catalysts of change and pathfinders of deeper realities. Walt Whitman, our great American poet and philosopher, wrote, From this hour, I ordain myself loosed of limits and imaginary lines, going where I list, my own master, total and absolute, listening to others, considering well what they say, pausing, searching, receiving, contemplating gently, but with undivided, undeniable will, divesting myself of the holes that would hold me. I am larger, better than I thought. <laughs> I did not know I had so much goodness. And then he says, on this hour, I adorn myself loose of limits and imaginary lines. Oh, friends, are we willing to ordain ourselves this day, loose of limits and imaginary lines? Imagine the symphonic chorus of the epigenetics, you know, the epigenes, turn-ons that would result 
in our body-mind systems. Everything we know is connection. Everything is connectivity, bridging, fractal resonance. Everything is patterned after the universe to which we are connected. It is a great game. It is a great inspiration to higher creativity. And yes, as you become part of this cosmic consciousness, a deeper mind actually moves into your own. You gain a much larger sense of your unique role and destiny in this time. Of course you are an evolutionary agent. Of course you're an infinite consciousness localized in a human body, brain, mind system. And you must never, ever underestimate your power. And that explains why creative people seem to feel themselves aligned, allied, hooked up to a higher order of guidance. We're living in a time that is the very fulcrum of creativity because the only expected these days is the unexpected. The only explicable is the inexplicable. Everything that was isn't anymore. Everything that isn't is coming to be because ours is the era of phenomenal change, the most radical deconstruction and reconstruction the world has ever known. More and more history happening faster and faster, life paths that contain us and have sustained us across millennia are vanishing. We are guests at a wake for a way of being that has been ours for hundreds, even thousands of years, but we are also guests at a birthing, a massive birthing that has never been seen before. Oh, dear friends, that is why you are among the most important people in history for what you do with your lives and professions, what I see you be doing with your life, how you tell creatively the new story, how you are the new story, I think makes a difference as truly as to whether we as a people grow or die. We are the crossroads between worlds, between species, between ourselves and forever. You know yourself to be its pilgrims and its parents, and no old formulas or stopgap solutions will suit. For a new world to be born, we must bring a creative new mind to bear. And that's why I always quote my favorite poet and playwright, Christopher Fry, when he says, Thank God our time is now. When wrong comes up to meet us everywhere, never to leave us till we take the longest stride of soul folk ever took. Huh. Friends, you, you people who I've been feeling so deeply close to and in a state of awe and gratitude, you are at the center of the nervous system of emerging history. And thus you have the opportunity to play a role in the greatest transition drama the world has ever seen. The time we are in right now may well be the great either or of history. And you are pressing the restart button, button the restart button. I ask, are we sucking away at a cosmic pap? Are we embryos in a cosmic womb? Or are we cells in a gigantic organism? To turn our consciousness to this kind of speculation is to wrench ourselves from the rust of millennia, from the habits of insular ideas. We are trying to make a gigantic leap of faith going cosmic without ever having necessarily been there. Yes, because do not doubt we are being prepared, and you, friends, you are a major part of it. You are being prepared. We are being prepared for the biggest shift in history. It has very practical consequences. Creative expression, excitement, manifestation, co-creation, creating the world that works. But this next stage is also one in which each one of you serves as bridge and builder of cosmic or evolutionary principles into life on this planet, and you do so with courage and commitment and with no turning back, <laughs> some of you become a luminous grounding force of manifestation of God's stuff into time. You become miracle literate, 
and what I'm calling miracles or extraordinary events become, as many of you know, the ordinary things of everyday life, whether it takes forms of healing, of remarkable synchronicities, as people, resources, events, and timing come into your life in a novelistic way as we have heard today. Patterns fall into place with ease and beauty, with certainty, and you discover that your life is advancing the world in little and big and enormous ways. You become ones who live in such a state of illumination where all things in your purview are pulled into resonance and meaning and the furthest star is in some ways right next door. You know, humans in heart and soul are mythic beings. You are mythic links. You are living mythic lives. I mean, compared to your ancestors of the 14th century, you better believe it, they would know you as the great heroes or heroines of all reality. One of the things about myths, myths sustain and shape our emotional attitudes. They provide us with purpose. They energize our everyday la lives. And they provide us with life purpose. And when we link our lives with the experiences of mythic characters, we inherit a cache, a large number of experiences that illumine and strengthen our own. That's why all over the world, and I've worked in 109 countries, I look for what is the activating myth, and then we play it out. And we play it out so that we become part of its undisguised relevance for our lives and our transformation. We also work with archetypes. What are archetypes? Because we have become directors of a world that up to now has mostly directed us. And this exponential growth in responsibility requires a corresponding enhancement in consciousness and psyche as formidable as it is necessary for as things are now. Huh? The extremely limited consciousness has the powers once mythically accorded to the gods. And as we attempt to play catch up, we find ourselves seeking the enrichment of archetypal friendships, an archetypal base that can provide us with missing components of intelligence, wisdom, compassion. What is trying to manifest is a new species that is within ourselves, perhaps from the future, attempting to unfold in your life in new and critical ways. You are central to this new myth, this new story, as you are becoming that of extraordinary resonance and relevance. You are becoming archetypal in yourself through your endeavors. Or if you prefer, you are yourself growing the archetypes, growing the gods. These next final years are not final, they are the most crucial time in human history. That's why I say, be not afraid, you were made for these times. There is a coding within each of us that is ready to give us patterns for life in this time. Just like as a little tiny little embryo, fertilized embryo, it's like a little dot, but it had the codes to unfold into you and your life. So it appears that there is a code within us ready to give us patterns for life in this world that transforms, that works. The very universe may be constantly emerging from a haze of possibility. And we may have a con, we inhabit a cosmos made real in part by our own observations. We are the shapers and the creators living in this participatory universe, this godded universe. As Meister Eckhart said, the eye by which I see God is the same eye by which God sees me. So we are part of a universe that is a work in progress. We are tiny patches of a universe containing the totality, looking at itself and building itself. My Sicilian grandmother, from Syracuse that used to look around at the world and say, hey, Gina, abundance, abundance. 
just the sheer abundance of the abundance of things. And then my mother, Maria Nunziata Serafina Graziella Fiorina Perpetua Tedaro, who married my father and became Mary Houston. <laughs> she kept talking about, oh, Jean, look for the conscienza generosa, the generous consciousness. The generous is so important. How, how we hold in thought and intention the amplitude of consciousness and feeling about a thing we know will often determine its expressive form, the manifestation of your intentions in the world of space and time. Those of you who hold the inner landscape of the splendid and joyous life, you discover that then a more splendid and joyous life will probably manifest as an outcome. We are always in the position of creating actuality of what is always potentiality. We are participating all the time in creation. Today, as we move into a planetary culture, we see a convergence of the sharing of the whole palette of human culture, beliefs, ways of being. We find all over the world the attempt to try and coalesce into a new and higher unity for which we are seemingly unprepared but which you, my friends, are doing the extraordinary work of re-preparation. Grounded in relationship with spiritual reality, we become God seeds. Our capacity for growth and deepening truly, virtually infinite. And since growth goes on in the infinite world, and the archetypes within you are continuing to grow as well, you also have to work to develop your potential in this incredible depth world, what Jesus referred to as laying up treasures in heaven. And the discovery of these treasures is made possible through the regular communion with the deep spiritual partners who know their purpose, what is Rumi referred to as the treasuries of unseen generosities. The treasuries of unseen generosities. I believe that we will be equal to the requirements and the responsibilities of new centuries only if we continue to nurture the innate seeds of our own divinity and have released those limited local parts and then risen to the resurrection of ourselves into a higher unitive reality that is both spiritual consciousness and global spirit. That's what you're doing. I close with the full poem by Christopher Fry, which tells us the truth. The human heart must go to the lengths of God. <laughs> Dark and cold we may be, but this is no winter now. The frozen misery of centuries cracks, breaks, begins to move. The thunder is the thunder of the flood, the flow, the upstart spring. Thank God our time is now when wrong comes up to meet us everywhere. Never to leave us till we take the longest stride of soul folk ever took. Affairs are now soul-sized. The enterprise is exploration into God. Oh, what are we waiting for? What are we making for? It takes so many thousand years to wake, but shall we wait for pity's sake? Oh, dear friends, after seeing and listening and sharing with you today, I know, I know we are awakening. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for feeling the call and hearing the call and following the call to come and share that message with us today. I don't know of anyone on the planet that more, more perfect than you to come and share such an inspirational 
and exhilarating message. And I know I can feel and people I can see in the chats and texting just how inspired and alive you have made us all feel. Thank you so much, Jean Houston. Thank you for being with us. We're very, very grateful. I'm very, very honored. Thank you. So there it is. Please join us again with your videos, if you like. We have really experienced something with that message from Gene and been given a bit of a job description, <laughs> a considerable job description. So we'd like to uh, just open the floor for a little bit for any reflections. I know some of the people that are here are at some of us are hearing this for the second time, others for the first time. And uh, I would just was I was amazed that Jean actually had set through an hour and 20 minutes of the closing ceremony and listened to all of those that shared from their experience of World Unity Week and sat there patiently uh, before she even began to speak and bringing us a message that was believable because that's who she is and that's who we are. So I would love to hear from others to share a little bit about your reflections on what you heard from Jean. And then um, maybe after we hear that a little bit, uh, Karima wants to share uh, something from Barbara. Barbara's present all the time. And, uh, and then we can just chat as you like uh, about anything related to World Unity Week. So as a starting point, uh, who would like to who would like to kick off the conversation of their experience of having the energy of Jean Houston hold a mirror to you? Connie? Uh, sorry, I was waving to somebody I think I know in the back of Kathy Mason's uh, video. <laughs> Is that Peter? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, as far as Jean and her poetic, truly poetic description of what I have a feeling everyone on this call is well aware of. Do I see some nods of heads of people that, I mean, you're, you're called here to the CCC because you resonate to a frequency that knows what Jean just said and have known it deep inside, whether you've articulated it or not and lived it or not over the past how many decades? Because <laughs> I see everybody here has got a few years under our belts. Um, so I just put take my hat off to her for for expressing it in such a beautiful way and reinforcing it for us, each of us who've known this and are bringing our peace, to our gift to the party, our gift of the Magi to the party um, and, and reinforcing it because we all need that reinforcement even though we know it. And it's our life and it's our vision and it's everything we are and see and know. And, but to be reinforced by Jean Houston herself and Barbara Marks Hubbard herself and Hazel Henderson herself, those three beautiful women who came together so long ago and, and really kicked this conscious evolution movement into, into play. You remember her, their book? They wrote a book, there was a book uh, that, uh, written uh, about Jean and Barbara and Hazel. I can't remember the name of it. You don't know? Oh my goodness, um, Noel. It's, um, it's, look it up. Because I don't know the name of it, but it, it was about a meeting that they had had, a gathering the three of them had sat together way back in the 80s. And um, this was, it was written in, a, it's in a book. I don't know the name of the book, but one of you might know the name of the book. 
Hazel but, Henderson, Hazel Henderson. Yeah, Hazel. Hazel Henderson, Jean Houston, and Barbara Marks Hubbard. Three, I don't know, feminine, whatever, I don't know. But meanwhile, so that's what I have to say is hats off to Jean and I look forward to her and Annalosa's books. And it's just so important that we all get the confidence to step out and, and speak our truths with power and clarity and that knowing that this is so. So I thank Barbara for that. For me, I've been stepping out for these decades, but it just helps to be able to step out with true power. And you have given me a, a, a format. And so as G, um, Kathy, you know, and, you know, we keep doing it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, so that's what I have to bring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it reminds me that so many times uh, in recent years when I've heard Jean Houston speak, she, uh, she tends to use a phrase um, every time that uh, uh, it's been said in the past that we live in interesting times, but these are the interesting times. She always says that. And this time it was like, I always have believed her when she said this is the interesting times, but... Maybe it was the culmination of a whole week of World Unity Week. And maybe it's who I am today compared to the last time I heard her say that. It just rang, rang so unbelievably true with everything else that she said in her soliloquy as well. Tex, uh, you put something in the chat. Would you like to contribute from your, bring your heart to your reflections of Jean's comments? Thank you, Bob. I've, uh, I heard uh, Jane Houston uh, last uh, Friday live uh, during the closing ceremony. And I uh, was like listening to, I don't know, I mean, Beethoven's uh, Ninth Symphony for the first time, you know, you had to just let it roll. Then try and really listen several times again to see if one can. I mean, one uh, soulfully senses there's beauty there, but uh, to grasp uh, the nuances, the profundity, the nobility of soul coming through, like takes, uh, I mean, I've, I've listened to her only today, again, uh, about three times preparing for this evening. And uh, yeah, I'm in awesome wonder. But uh, there again, when one considers that at 14, she was privileged to have almost like two walks a week uh, with the uh, Deschardes in Central Park. And uh, if when one reads the uh, essay, she wrote about this uh, encounter with Mr. Taylor as uh, she knew him then, mm -hmm. uh, because she, she did not know exactly who he was until years after he had passed away. So, that uh, was very impactful on her, and no wonder she's uh, turned out to be the person she is. Uh, I mean, what I hear from her, especially coming uh, at the closure of World Unity Week, and uh, I did not realize she had sat through, the, you know, uh, for some time listening to the different. Uh, uh, feedback from participants so it's uh i think uh, she she did uh, she paid tribute to everyone there and uh, so out of my own convergence room during that week there are two words that came out of there mythopoetic and cosmozoic so to me uh, what uh, jane houston said is a rallying, coherent articulation of a new mythopoetic cosmozoic vision for humankind. At least a critical mass, and uh, a critical mass uh, which starts uh, very much in CCC, uh, Co-Creators Convergence, where I attended my first meeting uh, sometime last year in October. And uh, it's been, uh, 
building up ever since. And I mean, that first meeting was to hear someone uh, speak about Tia Deshade. Mm. So I think the call now, after having lived through this week of uh, World Unity Week, hearing all these uh, great uh, testimonies, hearing all these uh, calls to action, is really uh, how do we engage effectively in co collaborative solidarity? How do we put our evolutionary love in action? Evolutionary love, as uh, Barbara Marxett Bird would uh, qualify it. How do we engage consciously in uh, this new uh, reverent revolution? So this is my, uh, I mean, for the last few days, I've been like uh, decanting all that I've lived through for a week, especially as a, as a room steward where, you know, build, building up the program as much as being used to build the program because I feel that there, we, we got assistance from elsewhere and just the uh, Annie Spade and myself uh, putting the program together. Because when we look at the coherence at the end, I mean, like, it's just like amazing how, how it all came together. So, yeah, I mean, we are the ones uh, needed. So I'm glad to be here this evening and I made a, a special effort to be here because it is uh, co-creators convergence and it's Noel and Bob. And I know everyone else will be coming here, our birds of a feather flocking together. We all Jonathan Livingstone seagulls after all. Uh, all Jonathan Livingston seagulls. It's a <laughs> the flock of geese. Uh, many, many lead when others uh, are tired. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Which is why we switched cameras there a minute That's ago right. during, <laughs> during Gene's comments. Uh, which one of us is more tired? Or obviously, I didn't get dressed for tonight. So thank you so much, Tex. I really appreciate your reflections on both um, the significance of her words and for you and your life, for all of us as a collective, and how that relates to, um, as I was saying before, for me, um, uh, just in a different state and a different energetic state uh, as a result of the week, because it was truly, truly amazing. I shouldn't say was because it's still going on. Someone said the other day, and uh, maybe it was last night uh, on the Unity Earth call, if we just listen to two of the 550 presentations a day, it'll take us almost a year to get through all of the wisdom that was brought. Uh, it's, uh, uh, that should, um, Mm -hmm. uh, form, uh, you know, an, an insurmountable job, but rather an unbelievable collection of gifts. So other reflection, please join uh, in. Uh, let me jump in here. It looks like uh, Bonnie has said- Noel, well, would you please take your audio, uh, I mean, uh, mute your audio. Oh, sorry. There you go. Okay. Uh, it looks like Bonnie knows the, the name of that book, uh, Connie, uh, Celebrating Female Consciousness, Is that the, the Power of Yin. That's Is that the book you're thinking of? And maybe yeah, Bob will say something. I think that female consciousness. Yes, the power of yin. I didn't know it was celebrating female consciousness. Yeah, cool. I remember the power of yin. Is that the full name, Bonnie? Yeah, it starts with power of yin, celebrating right. female consciousness. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank, yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing that into the. Thanks, Bonnie. Chats saved chat. Thank you. Yeah. So, who else would like to share about reflections? Uh, reflections here tonight. Reflections about your participation. Reflections about any of the comments. Uh, you know, I love the, these two words: uh, mythopoetic, cosmo, cosmozoic. It's cosmozoic. I have to practice that text. You're, <laughs> you're wording on me, dude. But uh, it's. Very beautiful. And, yeah. you know, um, we were kind of like typing into the chat some of the gems that, uh, some of the pearls that Jean dropped. And one of the things was about myths. You know, we're living a mythic life. And Bob and I recently yeah. have been watching the Joseph Campbell series, uh, The Power of Myth. It's uh, now a six part series on Gaia. And it just is truly blowing our mind thinking like this came out in 1987 what the heck were we doing in 1987 <laughs> because you know here we are 
you know, not many years later. Oh yeah, we got married. <laughs> oh, we did get married that year. Maybe those were our courting days, but we had no consciousness of any of this. <laughs> and it was just one step on the path. Yes. <laughs> one giant step for life partners. Yes, but some of these, some of these, you know, like you said, just the, the poetry and and what she said, you know, about how we're encapsulated bag of skin dragging around an ego. <laughs> 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 These things are, you know, um, uh, what about the, we're in the cosmic womb and, uh, you know, Barbara Marks Hubbard, this is why I see overlap, uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard was always saying, every day I'm new and what is the new story? And uh, Cynthia, you'll remember that Barbara, uh, with the birth 2012 that you were part of with us, she would always say, what is the new story? Uh, akin to the birth of Christ 2,000 years ago. What is our new story? And kind of what I'm getting from Jean is that we are the new story and we are the future humans. We have it all inside of us. So yeah. we just got to keep doing, you know, what we're doing. Just like Connie said, you keep you just keep doing it and, and you keep doing it and different platforms, different audiences, different, hopefully more will hear. Different day. Different day. So can you repeat you know, this? Can you repeat can you repeat the title of the book? The power of yin. Power yeah, it's in yes. the chat, but yes. yes, the power of yin, celebrating female consciousness. All right. And man, oh man, I wish there was a um somebody would transcribe her speech so that I could just read that over and over again because there were there were so many phrases that just just shook and shattered and inspired me i would love to read a i would love to have that i'd love to have that speech written down somewhere hell i would i would volunteer you send me the video i'll transcribe it it's okay. on YouTube, dear. Yay! Please do. That would be wonderful. Yeah, Please it's on do. YouTube. I, I guess I, I grabbed a old copy. Uh, I have it where, you know, that first part is, shouldn't have been on there. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, tell me again. It's on YouTube. It's on the Co Creators Convergence uh, website. Okay, the power of the end celebrating. It is. That's not Oh, well then get it there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not there yet. I was working I, I on it. I downloaded to YouTube. Yes, it's all it's, it's on YouTube. Oh, it's on our YouTube channel. I'm we'll sorry. send you a link to it, Mary. I'll send you a link Mary. Today. All right. So or the I'll, book I'll again, you're... the book again is the power of yin celebrating female consciousness. Right. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, thank you, Bonnie. Awesome. Who so, uh, I'm looking for the the. Uh, I love the phrase "emergence through emergency." Yeah. And the heat is turned up, literally, figuratively. So, who wants to jump in on that? But that's like Barbara's. Every crisis is a birth. It's an emergence through emergency. Breakdown for breakthrough. Yep. And we're certainly going through a lot of that, but um, yeah. How about how about always creating actuality from potentiality? Mm. Um, can you? Uh, I see you came back on on an iPad, Mary. Can you see the chat? I just put in the chat the YouTube link of the edited version that Noel uh, labored on a couple of days ago, and. Um, Oh, as soon as Jean stopped talking, which I was is, editing. Which is a little cleaner than uh, what we showed tonight, and on the front end and the back end. So you can get it there, uh, Mary, if you can get the chat. Or if not, we'll email it to you later tonight. Yeah. So who else would like to share your reflections? About anything, about World Duty Week, about Jean, oh. or Karima. Yeah, Karima. Unmute yourself, my dear. There. I, I can get the chat, but if you could send me the, if you could text me the link, that would be easier. Okay, yeah. we'll do it. And there's fire, there's fireworks going off and scooters going up, so I'm uh, going to mute. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we'll do Thank that. Thank you. Go ahead, Karima. Well, I loved a lot of uh, different aspects of her talk, the rallying, the 
um, you know, appreciation of all the beings that are helpful. But what really hit home is her knowing that we are becoming a new species. And it's kind of like we're going from Homo universalis. We're kind of bringing people to that point. But we are entering with these codes coming alive uh, inside of us. We are entering the Homo luminous stage. So as you know, I'll be talking on light body in a few weeks. And I caught her uh, comments on feeling within our bones uh, this big paradigm shift and igniting our pilot light. She really is aware of the cosmic consciousness. I think she's probably living that simultaneously with all the other uh, places she shows up. But uh, I just really enjoyed her um, bringing out that this is a new species. We have the codes inside of us and uh, to not be afraid. And um, I've done some more research on the electrical universe, which is becoming uh, the, new, the new way science will finally show up and honor it. Right now it's still like, oh yes, all the cosmos is working on gravity. And it's like, no. So uh, it is an electrical universe. And we are in that field. We are that. So um, I, I just, you know, I resonated the most with that. Um, the little short quote I wanted to read that uh, Connie posted her great Fourth uh, of July type of talk with a declaration. Uh, we lost your mic. Karina, you're oh, muted. Karina. There we go. I speak up a little bit, and I this didn't do that. Star, Star <laughs> Mark's cover, I believe. Yes. Yeah, so uh, in that little uh, YouTube video, she quoted Thomas Thomas Jefferson, and I had not heard this, and it's really like a CCC uh, motto. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All people are born creative, endowed by our Creator with the inalienable right and responsibility to express our creativity for the good of ourselves and for the whole earth family. I would not heard Barbara say that or Thomas Jefferson, but it's like, wow, that's CCC stuff. So anyway, uh, that's enough for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I love that quote. I love that yeah. quote. Mm -hmm. Yep. As world citizens, um, it gives a much broader view without diminishing our beloved nation here and all that's good about it um, to be able to uh, acknowledge ourselves as, as world citizens and um, that which is within us, that which is the gift we bring. So other, any, anyone else? Jim, Viola, any any thoughts you'd like to share this evening? Viola, I think you spend a lot of room in text, a lot of time in text in Andy's room. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Tell us something well, about that. I was I was busy in another room. I didn't get, I didn't get <laughs> to sample anything. Yeah, I'm kind of shy about talking about it, but I have so much to say and I'm kind of speechless. But I, I appreciate text in Annie so much because they... They got me involved in this world, you know, this one world. And I talk about <clears throat> what somebody said, uh, it would take years to, to just, if, if we only did two works, two of these uh, sessions uh, a day, uh, well, I did most of the one, uh, yes, I think I did everything that Tex and Annie did, which was awesome. And I just came, came, came away from that with a lot little notes, you know, I take notes and it's like, I have to go back and check out all of these things. And, you know, and tonight I got a lot of uh, information to go back and research because research is my thing. 
But I want to thank um, Tex and Annie for introducing me to all of you. And what I have to say about Jean Houston is uh, how she just came. You know, she talks a lot about synchronicity. I've done some of her workshops and, and she, um, you know, and, and she talks a lot about synchronicity and that how everything's speeding up and what we're all gonna experience more and more of it. And for me, I, I seem to live every day by synchronicity. Something just happens and, and I don't know why, but a, a book appears or a person says something and it's like, I'm connecting all these dots, which is a little bit, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of nerve wracking sometimes because you're trying to follow up all this. Is that, how does it all fit? And what's my responsibility in this? And what am I supposed to be doing about it? And so on. So it's a lot of listening is required. And then I want to say another thing about new story. You know, she, she talks a lot about new story. The, one of the last workshops I did was called Quantum, Quant Keys, the Quantum Keys or something like that. And and she mentioned that word, that new story idea. Just I mean, I I I got the notes, you know, because they give us the handouts for the notes and and underlined everything that said about new story. What's all this about new story? And that got me really into figuring out what was the new story. And then I became acquainted with, I don't know if you've seen the movie um, uh, or if you're familiar with the work of Brian Swim and um, Thomas Berry. You know, they, Thomas Berry was uh, always talked about that we need to write the story of the universe and that that would be our story. So I watched that movie, it's called um, The Story of the Universe. And it's, uh, I think you can get it on Amazon Prime. I don't remember whether I bought it. Oh, no, no, I think I saw it through the y y Yale University website. I saw it somewhere. I wish I can remember where, but I bought it. I have it. And I listen to it all the time. And I, I read all the, the books, Thomas Berry books, because that's exactly what we're doing. But they did this way back, um, I, I think in the night. Uh, see, when did they do this? Oh, gosh. two thousand and two or three. I mean, this has been going on where, like somebody said, well, where, where have we been? You know, this been out mm -hmm. for, where have we been? You know, why weren't we listening? And um, uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, finding our partners and all this. Yeah. Finding right. our, it's a great responsibility. And I feel that we, we have so much to do, but now finding you guys is like, we're all together for this common purpose of we're, we're looking for a way and you found it through this through this worldwide conference. I mean, that was amazing how we got all these voices together and everybody has the same goal. We all want this change. We all want to help. We all want to, that's why we're all here. So I, I commend you. That's, that's, I guess that's where I can uh, just finish saying that I, I'm impressed and I'm so thankful that you are in my life and that I met Tex and Annie because they were the ones who told me about you. <laughs> it's like a little, a link, you know, first we met Annie and then Annie came yeah. to our call and then Tex came and then Annie and Tex and now Annie, Tex, Noel, Bob, Annie, Tex, Viola, and that's how we keep growing. You know, it's kind of fun, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so really welcome good. and come back every Thursday. Yeah, come back every Thursday. If you give me your email uh, uh, address, I will send you our monthly roster. Uh, oh, please. Yeah, so if you give me your email, Viola, I'd be happy to yeah, share if, that. If you could you. put that in the chat, that'd be handy. Yeah. And also know that at cocreatorsconvergence.com are six years worth of these uh, gatherings, Thursday night yeah. uh, Thursday night gatherings. And yeah, you'll uh, find some and, vintage you know, Barbara Marks covered there. Exactly. In the first probably four or five years, we always had Barbara as our first uh, conversationalist of the year and other special occasions when she joined us as well. Mm -hmm. And it is because of Barbara uh, asking Noel and Bob the question, what is our gift in the shift of humanity that caused us to drive down the consciously evolving road that ended up someplace in the western part of the country meeting Jim Eagle Smith. And <laughs> so, <laughs> Jim, what are your reflections this yeah. evening? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was interesting because when the video started and she started talking, I dropped into that space i put my space time suit on <laughs> dropped into the fractal resonance 
And then I just got stoned on her talking because she drops all these superlatives one after the other. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys were getting high on it too, because you just fall into it. And she just takes you on this boat ride on the ocean of consciousness. And those, so it's that vocabulary that it's that is weaving the story. I don't even know how to characterize it, but it brought me back to a memory a few years ago when I was in Ashland. And she had an eight-day conference and asked me to sing some songs and poetry and stuff. And, and then halfway through it, she fell down her stairs at home and, and wrecked her knee, hurt it pretty bad. So for one day, she, she asked me to come over to the house and work on her knee, do some therapy and ice it down and stuff and tell her how to, how to walk properly to, for her knee. Well, during that time, she went like this without reading anything she just starts going off and talking because her natural conversation has those superlatives in it she yeah. can't clear that out and sound like normal like me or you she <laughs> has to talk at that level because that's and it was like i'm just so distracted you know it's like you know she puts me in a trance like i don't know if you guys experience that trance like feeling when she starts talking but the and barbara was the same barbara had some superlatives and things that she would drop to that put me in a trance and reminds me of the old days when I, in Reno when I sold books in the Silver Sage bookstore, selling Barbara's books and Jean's books and stuff. And people would come back in and say, oh, what, is there a sequel to this book? I want another book. That was good. You know, it's like once you start, you guys know it better than I, I do about, about how Barbara gets you like ingrained and, and just into it. And it's a consciousness evolution that once you're on, you don't want to get off because it's it's raising your consciousness. It's expanding your heart intelligence and preparing us. I think uh, her and Barbara prepared me and many of us for this uh, COVID pandemic and the information that they gave us helped us endure getting through the pandemic and move into a mind demic of heart intelligent compassion that we need at this time. And so... You guys, that you guys there are to continue this work is really more important than I think we even believe that it is. It's there's no I don't have any words to describe how important it really is, you know. And I just, you know, I'm a humbled by it. You know, I wish I could have been uh, with you guys last week, but I couldn't. But I'm here now, and I can feel the what happened last week now with everybody sharing you know i can feel that that resonance of that information and i'm jealous <laughs> <laughs> well there's, there's no need to be jealous all of the all of the videos that were in room one which were the, the room one was one of the zoom rooms that was going on all eight days uh there were four days of convergences in 31 or 32 rooms simultaneously. And there were a couple of hours, four hours each day of those four days where there were no, nothing going on in the convergence rooms because we all went over to the plenary room mm. one, plenary room. Everything that was in room one was replaced. Is, is right on worldunityweek.org. So okay. everything that was there. So um, unbelievable presentations by uh, Audrey Kitagawi, who was the former uh, head of uh, the Parliament of the World's Religions, talking about um, the loneliness of youth in America today, and as that relates to the use of social social media. Yes. Uh, there were um, Deepak Chopra was there, Bandana Shiva was oh, there. Oh, Bandana Shiva, you gotta watch and that. And so one. all of those and many, many more, there um, was. Uh, yeah, the panel you had with Stephen Dynan and Marianne Williams. We had a panel of. Our friend uh, Eleanor McCain. Yeah, really conversation on seeking unity in American democracy on Friday evening. That's there. Uh, there was a, a, a roundtable discussion on the first night. Uh, of the Men of Unity Week, which was an amazing uh, um, uh, hour and a half together. So it's all there from those rooms. And then all the convergence room stewards, like Tex and ourselves, um, we had responsibilities to put back into the schedule the Facebook recordings of ours. And then, of course, over the next few weeks, we'll edit all of ours. We'll put them all on co-creators convergence. So you can actually go uh, keep yourself busy for quite a while. No need to be jealous. Um, I really appreciate, Jim, what you say about her um, putting you into a trance in the vocabulary. And um, 
it's it's there's always the present moment and excitement about the way she shares her wisdom and it was somewhat different well different vocabulary different personalities if you will with barbara and connie can relate to this because we all ate in the same dining room at sunrise ranch for such a long period of time over a couple of years and and when barbara would come into the dining room and sit down and for breakfast and <laughs> if she sat next to you if you were at the table that she would where she sat down it was the excitement of something new the excitement of what it is that's new about today and there was never any kind whether there was a foot of snow on the ground two feet of snow on the ground or fires blazing on the hillside none of that was conversation what was conversation was that which is significance to the conscious evolution of humanity mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what the conversation was about <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you jim yeah we also had uh, i thought was uh, a wonderful uh, well, well, two things I thought were extra special that uh, we had, and that was um, uh, our priest from when we lived in Wisconsin, Father Joe, has become a very good friend, and uh, he and his uh, uh, neighbor, uh, uh, David Mueller, they did a presentation on the canonization of Dorothy Day, and I don't know if anyone knows, recognizes the name of Dorothy Day. Other but when Mary. the Pope Francis came and talked to the U.S. Congress, she said there were only three. He said, Pope, the Pope. The Pope Francis yeah. said there were three people he he admired in uh, American in America, and one was Abraham Lincoln, one was Martin Luther uh, King Jr., and uh, four Thomas Merton and Dorothy Day. And everybody got. Dorothy Day. Who is Dorothy Day? And uh, so they uh, showed some videos and talked about uh, she started the Catholic worker movement, which is still ongoing today. She was a peace activist. She was the only um, person in the Catholic hierarchy or whatever that uh, voted against every war. And uh, she was a peace activist. Some people call her socialist called her communist, called her all these different things. And she just said, I'm Christ to the poor. I'm following the Beatitudes. I don't care what you call me. I'm doing what I'm called to do. So that was a very extra special presentation. And another one that we had was, uh, again, our friend Eleanor McCain is longtime friends with Barbara Marks Hubbard's brother-in-law, Daniel Ellsberg, who you might recognize from the Pentagon Papers. And uh, she did an hour interview. He he just turned 90 and Eleanor was at his online birthday party. And uh, so I said, well, Eleanor, what do you think about getting Daniel on World Unity Week? And she says, okay. And um, so he gave uh, uh, an amazing talk. And he says, you know, we're not just looking at, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, all kinds of work on denuclearization of this planet. He wrote his latest book was called The Doomsday Machine and uh, talked about the doomsday clock, which I'm shocked to find that so many people don't even know what it is put out by concerned scientists about where we are on the planet. There's only so many seconds till uh, midnight till we destroy ourselves yet again. And uh, so he says it's not just nuclear threat now, it's also the climate threat. So we have this genius uh, talking with us for an hour. And I have the honor to be able to, you know, edit and put that together. So we had a pre-recorded because at 90, we kind of had to cut him a slack uh, that we would do it on his time, not World Unity Week's time. <laughs> so, um, but there were many, many very special presentations that week. And uh, I just want to point those two out from our room. And Tex, would you like to, your room, Stuart, would you like to tell people about your room and what something extra special that stood out for you and and are any available for folks to track them down also to to watch them you'll need to unmute yes thank, thank you well you probably ask Viola to be our reporter but anyway <laughs> no well our room was entitled the uh, whole self nurturing and healing justice so 
we opened in, with the collaboration, a special collaboration from Cosmos uh, Journal. Cosmos Journal was founded by uh, Nancy Roof, who is now in her early 90s, I understand. The current editor, Rhonda Fabian, was with us. Uh, Nancy also, she spoke uh, at the opening. Uh, why we had that collaboration was that uh, uh, Annie Spade had an article published in the spring edition uh, and Cosmos Journal is a quarterly and the spring edition is a, a century of awakening and uh, Annie's article was about the importance of nurturing the, the ch children, good nurturance of children and uh, she also highlighted the childlike qualities of uh, Thea de Chardin which uh, even uh, Jean Houston reported in her walks uh, with Thea de Chardin was that, uh, you know, the, this wonderment that Thea de, de Chardin always expressed, you know, be it uh, at a caterpillar, you know, she, she tells about one incident when she, he knelt down to watch a caterpillar and called her in to, to, you know, to contemplate the caterpillar, you know, the funny legs and then, you know, what do you think, what, what, what type of butterfly it will become? And then she, she asked him, and you, Jean, what papillon, what butterfly will you be? Like, uh, I mean, these are, I mean, she even believes that the quartz, that uh, quartz stones that she was, uh, they were seeing, you know, would be uh, like uh, glistening when Teyad would be speaking to, to the stone, you know or getting her to take uh, breaths of air, you know, uh, the, it was a bit windy, a blustery day, as uh, Winnie the Pooh said to Piglet. Anyway, a blustery day and Teyad got her to sniff uh, and say, can you imagine this air was breathed by Jesus Christ, uh, by, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, so many different people anyway. That was a sort of reflections he would he would he would engage it. So Teyad had this quality of uh, even if he was an adult man, uh, you know, of being in wonder uh, with nature. And uh, so Annie's article uh, brings out because she's a Montessori pedagogy pr practitioner. She opened a school. Uh, she has this school in in Austin, Texas. Uh, based on the Montessori pedagogy. So she believes in uh, nurturing children properly. Now, I wrote a complimentary article, like we collaborated on both, but we were we could only have a thousand words. So we had more to say than, than a thousand words would allow us. So we had two articles. I, I did a complimentary one. And we have and we have more people to share tonight also. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so essentially it's the nurturing of the child uh, the children and nurturing of the innate uh, child in all human beings. If we want to have a better world, it takes better adults. Better adults takes better children. To have better children now, we as adults need to take stock where we at and see how we can uh, uh, treat children better. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. Yeah. we'll all be just uh, charters and decades and all that lot, and we'll be on and on and the world will not get better. So do you text uh, is um, do you have links to the Facebook recordings in your Trillo board? We as put as many as we could. OK, uh, we were could, not. Could you put the link for your Trillo then in this chat? So Jim yes. would be able to just pull that. Oh, yes. Then he could go to or, and Viola too. others of us could uh, go to that Trillo board and they have read only but not edit privileges, but the links would be there. The descriptions of the different things that took place in Tex and Annie's room would be there, and then a hot link to the Facebook recording. So that would be wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Tex. And I'm also putting the link to our uh, Gifts of the Magi. Ah, yes, thank you, Noel. Uh, Karima, you have, your, you have your hand up, your paw up. <laughs> Unmute if you would, please. Actually, I sorry I didn't take it down, but I was just looking for the question that went along uh, with this, 
uh, gathering, and it was something to the effect of what is yours to do? Uh, did this week help you define that? And uh, really quickly, because uh, I'd like to hear from other people, I do hope everyone watched. I watched it today, or I listened to it on my walk, the uh, crisis of loneliness uh, among young uh, Americans. Uh, that's a must. Everyone should hear that. And it just made me realize I'm in sync with uh, doing, uh, with helping with that already. Um, I, I developed some classes for college students just coming into college and giving them more control over their thinking and feeling and just kind of a mindfulness based uh, uh, practical metaphysics uh, that I thought if every student took that when they came in in their first year, not only would it help them through college, it helped them through life. And so the group today uh, in speaking about how do we help these students, I thought, well, and I've actually already started gathering all my notes from my classes and um, speaking to someone about publishing that. I gave up the memoir. It's like, it's about me. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, there's ecstatic poetry. But, you know, so I am already just have begun focusing before this week uh, on uh, gathering that. And I did ask a few colleges in the past, how about presenting this uh, to students when they come in? And a few colleges are doing that, but hardly any. And they, they don't have positive psychology in their curriculum. They have, you know, abhorrent, horrible type psychology uh, to address after you're already messed up. So anyway, so I'm really happy, and I, and I will work with John uh, Raymer on this. He wants to gather people. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy I was already headed that way. And now with, see, with listening to that, it's like, oh my god, that, that is where I need to focus. So. I think that's, that's one of the pieces of magic of the week is that uh, you had already started on that path and now there's more people, John and others that are just like awoke, just woke up because of Audrey's, uh, Audrey's comments and, and have found a focus and for you an amplification, uh, collaboration and amplification of what's mine to do tomorrow morning when I get up, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that throughout World Unity Week and all these different, different people found theirs in different places or that in multiple places. Thing. And, uh, you know, those of us that were involved in World Unity Week last year, by a exponential comparison to what this year was compared to last year in all of that, and in, in, in speaking our voice and bringing our gift and amplifying what's being done by others and people finding something that really lights them up or amplifies what they're already doing, like some of the um, uh, conscious movies that we had four movies for the four nights of the convergence with uh, with after talks with the filmmakers. And, um, you know, there's just other connections that have been made because of that that are going to amplify the messages of those movies, which are so beautiful, the wisdom of the grandmothers and the, and the power of connection. So thank you, Karima. I appreciate it. Is um, uh, We're going to need to wrap up. Well, we typically wrap up <laughs> at uh, 930 Eastern um, and like to do it a little uh, pretty soon here. But uh, any, any final comments from anyone? Thank you, well for putting in the link for the Gifts of the Magi room. You put the uh, Trello board in? Yes, you did. I put okay. a link to the Trello board as well as our last letter, which has uh, who our speakers are that are coming up, upcoming. And um, I think that's about it. Yeah, we have we also, a wonderful month plan. Uh, Want to jump in here, final word? Four, four oh. words? <laughs> Bonnie? Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to mention something real quick. Um, I uh, want to thank you all for running those wonderful rooms that I was in. And Karen, there's no saying how fantastic you were in the hub room and helping us all. Um, what I'll mainly say is what I saw was a bunch, uh, a, a lot of seeds being planted. And I'm going to look forward to seeing the trees in the garden. Thank One. you. 
Thank you, Beautiful. Bonnie. Thank Beautiful. you so much. We, we appreciate you being in our room. We know you were uh, often about in other places as well. It's a great way to describe the week. seeds planted, seeds fertilized, uh, fruit to be fruit to be harvested uh, soon and yeah. in the future. Noel? Well, I just want to close and say that this is uh, our second uh, two of two World Unity Weeks. And um, there's going to be the, the idea is that it goes until 2020. 2030. So there's going to be 10 or 11 of these. So that's the plan. This was year one. So <laughs> last year, year was year zero. Year, this was year one. Of the, of the decade of consciousness. Yes. So thank you everyone for coming and uh, love you all. Come back next Thursday. We'll have Janet Smith Warfield and she is a word sculpturist. So uh, talked about words, so power of your words. So thank you all for coming thank tonight. You. Good to see you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Yeah, much, love you all. much love to all. Much <laughs> love. Yeah. Thanks for hosting a wonderful room. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for being a part of it, Tommy. Thank you for being a part.